Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the meeting to order. The time is 7.30. This is the regular council meeting for July 25th. But can you please do roll call? Councilwoman Aaron? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Bliss? I'm here. Councilman Fleming? Here. Councilor Rohrbach? Here. Councilman Soltis? Here. Councilor Wright? Here. Mayor Grassi? I am here, thank you. The invitation and Pledge of Allegiance this evening will be uh, by Mr. Workup. I ask you to stand here. I vow to myself and each of you to com commit myself daily to the healing of our world and the welfare of all beings, to live on earth more lightly and less viol violently in the food, products, and energy I consume, to draw strength and guidance from the living earth, the ancestors, the future generations, and my brothers and sisters of all species, to support others in our work for the world and to ask for help when I need it, to pursue a daily practice that clarifies my mind, strengthens my heart, and supports me in observing these vows. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right, thank you. First off, uh, approval of the agenda. Are there any additions or deletions this evening? Seeing none, we're going to head into presentations and we've got the bike rodeo winners. Chief? Thank you, Mayor, Council. Um, it's a pleasure to be here this evening. Uh, we have one of our recipients of the bike, um, bike raffle here tonight. The other one is not here yet. So um, what I'd first like to do is, is thank Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union. Um, every year they have donated the money to purchase these bikes for the children and also to thank this year um, <clears throat> American Cycle uh, they're the ones that we were able to purchase the bikes from and in a, in a moment's notice they actually showed up to our bike rodeo um, the previous company had backed out at the last minute uh, due to COVID and all the other things that were going on um, and they stepped up and did an absolute superb job I mean they actually helped with bike helmet fitting I mean, they did everything possible to make sure that we got a successful rodeo so what I would like to do is invite um, Sheila from the credit union up here, if she, just to say a couple of words before we do the presentation. Thank you. At Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union, we call ourselves financial champions because we care about helping our members achieve success. We're also dedicated to the communities in which we serve. And that we live by our motto, which is people helping people by giving back to our neighbors. The Madison Heights branch is honored to once again select the Madison Heights Police Department and the Bike Rodeo as the recipient of a $1,000 donation for the work they do in the community, especially with families and children. Thank you to Chief Haynes and his entire department for their service to the people who live and work in Madison Heights. We also have Dan here from American Cycle. Did you want to come out up and, and say anything, Dan, or are you just uh, happy to be here? I'm happy to be here. I was <laughs> not prepared to speak. Okay, <laughs> Thank you for the invite. I do appreciate it, and uh, ultimately want to take care of the community as much as we can, especially for the kids. And we greatly appreciate everything you gave us here, so once again. All right, so our award winner tonight for the girls' bike is Morgan Kazor. So if I can have Morgan and her family come up. Modernized 75 segment three. Uh, they tore down the uh, 
um, sound barrier walls. They did direct new ones. However, in between Andover and Cowan, the one that they rebuilt was not even half the size. I could sit on my porch and watch trucks go by. I called them, they never responded. Number two, exits before, um, on northbound before uh, Lincoln. Madison Heights Police Department last year wrote hundreds of tickets for people cutting through because of traffic and on the freeway. Can you guys just check into that and see what's going on with that, how we're gonna avoid people being streaming through the neighborhood. And last but not least, uh, engine brakes for southbound traffic. Uh, as trucks come to 696, traffic gets congested. They have their engine brakes on. At six o'clock in the morning, they'll wake you up. I don't know what you can, if an ordinance could be done, but engine brakes were designed to hold back loads when you're going down a mountain. Not, not coming through a city, it's not made for city traffic. So that's it for me. I just wanted you guys to check into that and see what's up. Appreciate it. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak this evening? Thank you Great seeing no one else from the public. I'm going to close uh, public comment and Commission First up, we have the resignation from the Planning Commission of Bruce Kahn. What is the wish of council? Um, Your Honor? Yes. <clears throat> I move that we accept Bruce Kahn's resignation from the Planning Commission, declare the seat vacant, and issue him the appropriate proclamation of things. Uh, thank you. Is there support? Yeah. is the agreement with Macomb County for the city to provide adventure maintenance on all lanes of Duquinder from 10 mile to 14 mile. The city, the county has proposed a five year agreement during which increases or decreases will be brought back to city council for approval. This year's contract allows $7,120.91 per mile for a road for a total of 28,982.10. This per mile currently matches the rate paid by Oakland County. Staff recommends that City Council approve the contract and authorize the Mayor and City Council to sign on behalf of the City. Um, clarification, Mayor and City Clerk? Yes. Okay. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, what is the wish of Council? Your Honor. Uh, I move that we uh, approve the agreement with Macomb County for winter maintenance um, and authorize the Mayor and Clerk to sign on behalf of the City. Alright, thank you. Is there support? servicing a 14 mile from Barrington Street to Dequinder Road. The estimated total cost for this project is $5.5 million. In addition, the Road Commission for Oakland County has also entered into an agreement with MDOT to expand to expend federal surface transportation and highway infrastructure funding for $4.9 million of this project, leaving a local share to be allocated through the Tri Party Program of $629,645. This will require a Madison Heights share of 52,471. Staff and I recommend council consider two separate motions. First, to amend the budget for $52,471 to the major road account, 202-450-988-0445, and a second motion to approve the tri-party cost participation agreement and authorize the mayor to sign on behalf of the city. And just a reminder, the budget amendment takes a super majority of council. Your Honor, I move the council um, approves a budget amendment of $52,471 to the major roads account 202-450-988-0445. Right, thank you. Is there support? 
Your Honor. I support. Your Honor, I move that Council approves the tri-party cost participation agreement and authorizes the mayor to sign on behalf of the city. Thank you. Your Honor, I support. Uh, Your Honor, just really quick. Um, a lot of this can be confusing to our residents, and I know we don't exactly have a packed house tonight, but in the event that there are people who will watch it on YouTube afterwards, could staff give kind of a quick overview of what this tri-county uh, tri agreement is and how our roads are maintained with some of this? Because there's a lot of confusion I see on, on Facebook about who's taking care of what road and how everything's contracted. So just like the, the 60 second overview, in case anybody's watching. Yeah, 14 mile. Your Honor, um, 14 Mile is a county road um, under county maintenance. Um, the county does reimburse uh, the city for minor maintenance of 14 Mile um, and winter maintenance of 14 Mile. Uh, city staff does not bottle patch 14 Mile Road. County forces do that. But as far as the road construction in its entirety, um, the city is responsible for a portion of and a tri party, much like what the city of Troy is and our CLC is. Now this contract here is um, a state funded MDOT project along with Road Commission for Oakland County funds and also local funds as well. I, does that answer the question? In 60 seconds? That's perfect. Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you. Aye. Aye. Then our third report from the city manager, the Michigan Employees Retirement System, uh, delegates and alternates for the annual meeting. The city council is being requested to appoint Melissa Marsh and Amy Mishak to serve as the officer delegate and officer alternate respectively and to certify the employee's election of Johnny Browner and John Brackett as the employee delegate and employee alternate respectively to attend the 76th annual MERS meeting on September the 26th and 27th at Grand Traverse Resort in Acme. All right, thank you. What is the motion council? Um, Your Honor. Uh, I move that we appoint, uh, well, you know what, can I just say, uh, can we adopt this motion as uh, as recommended by staff? That'll be easier. All right, motion to <laughs> Thank you. adopt the uh, recommendation of staff. Is there any discussion? Or sorry, is there a second? Sure. Please. Also. Right, thank you. Uh, motion has been made and seconded to adopt the recommendation of staff. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. Easier than rereading what she just read. Next up, we have the minutes. Before I ask for approval, the clerk has a motion to Yes, staff has requested that under um, Council Motion 22 226 that the words due to auto wash use being prohibited in the M1 zoning district and be stricken from that motion. That's not, that's not accurate. It, it wasn't said. It, you, re, you rezoned it, and that was the old zoning. Okay. Your Honor, yes. I move that we adopt the minutes as amended by staff. Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I want to first say, um, last Thursday, I had an opportunity to attend a focus group that the Oakland County Parks and Recreation had put on. And as the council alternate, I was there along with you know, Councilor Wright, who was there as a member of the, of the community. And we had 
along with that we had some members of the Madison Heights Park and Recreation as well as the Hazel Board Park Rec. And during that meeting we had a lot of discussion about what we were going to be doing with Red Oaks Golf Course as well as Ambassador Park. And at first we were all under the presumption that it was a either this or that. But we were told that we could possibly, because Red Oaks, let me, let me backtrack, Oak Park wanted to, you know, rid of the golf course, however, and make it more user friendly in their words, whereas it will have more green land and bike trails and walking trails and do away with the golf course. But many of us that were sitting there, we were saying that the golf course was still a much needed tool here in the community and we wanted to maintain it. So it came to an idea where they can possibly do both. So I'm saying all of that to just let everybody know there is a survey that is out right now. You can find it on the Madison Heights social media page. You can find it on most of a council's page. Go in and complete the survey. It's asking some really important questions. There was one question that Nina asked during that meeting, and she asked if we felt as though the parks belong to us. And it was said that many times we believe the parks belong to Oakland County. But those are our parks, Madison Heights parks. And you have a voice. Take the survey so that you can save the golf course or have an opinion in what's going on with that. And also there is another meeting that will be planned during the week of August 8th. It's an open meeting. It's for everyone. Please come out. Please, you know, let your voice be known and be heard. Um, another thing that I want to say is, as we all know, this is Minority um, Mental Health Awareness Month. And I don't even like saying Mental Health Awareness Month anymore. We just have to make certain that we maintain mental health awareness. Um, and our, there's a new number for the suicide hotline, which is 988. So opposed to opposed to just using the long 11 digit number, you can just press 988. There is someone that's gonna be there 24 hours a day that's a licensed trained counselor to listen to you and hear you out. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank uh, you. Yes, Your Honor. So the, uh, I think the discussion on the Red Oaks Golf Course is uh, kind of shocking to most residents. Uh, I've, I've been here long enough to remember when the soccer park was actually uh, like a go-kart place with a few other amenities. And you know that was back when Kmart was still in operation. And it was a, it was a place to go. And the county kept losing money on it. They, because they were losing money on it, they weren't getting the money to keep it up as much as they needed to. And so the decision that they had come to was to make it what is now our premier soccer park. And that park is, you know, it's, a, it's an absolute gem in the city. <clears throat> Would I prefer today to still ride a go-kart? Absolutely. Love those go-karts. And I got to drive a lot further to go and ride some go-karts now. But it was the right move at the time. Uh, I think the county is struggling with the same thing. Uh, this golf course isn't doing too well. It's losing some money. They're trying to figure out how, how to best uh, invest in this park uh, because if people aren't going to use it as a golf course, if they're gonna choose other golf courses around in the area, what's a better way and a better use of that space? And so unlike in the past, there's now an online survey. So all of our residents and residents and other communities, anybody who's gonna come into the city, can have a say as to what could potentially be there. And look, change is scary and hard, and yeah, I still wish that there were go-karts, but there might be an opportunity to bring something great into the city. So I would just encourage residents, even if you would prefer that it stay golf, use that comment section use use that survey as the chance to share if it's not golf what else would you like to see because the decision's not ours and you now have an opportunity to make your voice heard so i would just encourage that i'm i'm glad that we're having the open discussion and 
Honestly, I'm excited to see where it leads. Uh, how much of our residents' feedback is taken into account for what the future state is going to be is, I think, tantamount to how good that location is going to be for our city when it's all completed. So please fill out the form, share it on social media, let your neighbors know who don't have social media. A lot of our senior citizens don't participate in surveys like this because they don't have access. So please walk to your next door neighbor's houses and fill out the survey with them if you can, uh, because their voices are equally as important. That's it, Your Honor. I would just like to echo everyone's sentiment um, about the, I don't know, I'm holding the mic like this. This is the one thing I said not, you say I said not to do. Um, I was actually, uh, when I attended the focus group, one of the things I appreciated most was how they want to make the park more accessible to a, a broader amount of people in the community. Um, as a person who golfs poorly, I definitely appreciate Red Oaks Golf Course, and I've admittedly uh, dug a few holes accidentally uh, with a few um, irons and clubs. However, um, so many ideas that they're proposing, I think, uh, benefit a, a broader group of the, our community, from our seniors to our children, to folks like myself who need to run a little bit more so maybe they can catch the chief one day in a running competition. Um, and I, I would just encourage you to just to take an opportunity to take a look at that survey. Um, and forewarning, like it, it doesn't, it just asks you about how much you use the park, the golf course, and like how often you go, there is a comment section, but it's not like a robust thing where you can like have a million questions. It's like five or six questions, but um, let your feedback be heard because I, when I threw it out there to a couple of people just asking for their honest feedback on the golf course, the first thought I got back was like, no, why would you do that? But after I kind of talked to them about what's being proposed and what's out there, they softened on it a little bit because it wasn't just like we were changing just to change. There was a reason behind. So, so uh, that survey has been has been uh, reiterated, and uh, everyone be kind. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Nothing was said about the survey, but that's been covered. So again, our topic. Yes. I uh, just want a reminder that the August 2nd is the pri state primary election. Our all polls will be open in the city of Madison Heights from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, Precinct 8 is now located permanently at Page Middle School. Parking will be off Ed in the parking lot off Edwards. Um, the clerk's office is open for election business only this Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So come in and visit us while we're there. Get your absentee ballot, register to vote, do whatever, register to, to vote, um, do whatever you need to do over election related. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Um, first, I want to say um, a thank you to our Parks and Rec staff. My kids have been attending the Parks and Rec uh, camp this summer, and they are over the moon. They love it so much. So, I, Corey, please extend my thanks for me and all the parents of Madison Heights that, that are entrusted to the staff um, at the camp, uh, the day camp. It's been wonderful, and we look forward to continuing this summer. Um, um, and I also just want to, I'm, going to, I'm not going to reiterate everything they said about the survey um, but I also want to say um, remember to vote it's very important and if you have an absentee ballot in your hands I suggest you take it to the drop box rather than wait put it in the mail take it in drop it off make sure it comes in on time and you can check the status of your absentee ballot online so do that that's it So <clears throat> if you didn't know, the uh, Gardenia and Lincoln Bridges are now open across I-75. And uh, I've been across both of them. It uh, looks really great. Uh, both of them, the, both Gardenia and uh, Lincoln and 11 Mile, the bridges look almost exactly the same, to be honest. But uh, also, we want to remind everybody to drive cautiously because there's still um, construction work that's still happening on the bridges. They're putting up the, uh, the light signals and um, still the guardrails on the sides and you know you don't want anybody to get hurt or uh, run into something and there's a lot of just got to pay attention and drive slow across the bridge that way there's no accidents that happen uh, secondly the Madison Heights animal shelter 
uh, it has an Amazon shopping list that you can find on the Facebook page for the uh, animal shelter. Uh, they have a whole huge list of things that they're asking for. You can go ahead and purchase those items, and it's a really great help to the, uh, the animals that are staying at the uh, animal shelter. And the last thing I have is the Crime Commission has an upcoming event on September the 6th. Uh, at, it's going to be about 6 o'clock in the evening where the Michigan Attorney General, Dana Nessel, will speak about uh, fraud and consumer protection. And in, in the future, here shortly, we'll be posting some more information uh, for the public uh, to know about the event. That's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, first, I want to um, acknowledge the fallen officer Detroit officer Corin Quartz, uh, who passed away, uh, was shot and killed in the line of duty. My oldest son is, a, is an officer. He attended the funeral. Uh, he said it was so many officers from, from everywhere. Even in the, the Canadian Mounties were there to attend. Um, so if we keep the, him in our prayers. Um, I had a question, I don't know if it came up. The road work on DeQuinder between 12 and 696, is that is that happening? Is that is that because uh, they got those um, not the barrels but the more the orange cylinder ones that are all lined up along uh, DeQuinder? No, I'm not. Uh, I'm not aware of any projects going on on DeQuinder from, okay. from 696 to 12. Yeah. Um, well, they're there, so I don't know. They're up to something, I imagine. That was just curious. Um, second, I just saw in the news of the free press. Uh, so I'm currently considered a uh, Detroit public school employee uh, as a teacher and I was reading about the superintendent of Detroit and it says here on the Detroit Free Press, Detroit superintendent's wife resigns from a literacy nonprofit following a contract backlash. So I don't know. Um, you know, if you're interested, look at it. <clears throat> uh, you know, it'd be you know, the, our school systems in, in Michigan, at least, uh, at least in southeastern Michigan, there's a lot of diversity issues. Uh, there's a lot of issues that I've noticed. And so, you know, I hate to see, being from Detroit, when I taught there, um, you know, before the summer, uh, I, I hate to see that something like this is going on um, because they, there's enough problems as it is uh, that they, but the leadership has to really be in place in order to to make improvements, but anyhow, um, that's it. All that's all I got to say. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone for your comments today. Um, just uh, as was mentioned, there's a survey to by the county. This is regarding mainly regarding the golf course, which is a county uh, golf course. So the city is in our city, but like any other government uh, entity in our city, we have very little say over it. So. Um, if you would like to say in keeping the golf course and changing the golf course, uh, take a look at the survey. Um, if you try to contact us today, our email and phones were down. Uh, they should be up sometime tomorrow. And this is actually uh, because there was a line that was cut during the construction. So um, lots of things going on with the construction. I know that they're working in the middle of the night, they're working early, they're working late. We're getting complaints, we're looking into it. Um, and we are doing what we are able to, but we're very limited in what we can do. They have timetables and it's the same. <laughs> so sorry for not having them, but um, you know, you're welcome to bring your complaints to us. We will take it as far as we can go. Um, our next meeting is August 8th. Eight. Eight. The next meeting is August 8th. The time is now 7.58. This meeting is adjourned. Good day.